May mood. As a young girl, May has... It's discovered that she has a lazy eye. And... For some reason, I don't know how often this actually happens in real life, but... They put an eye patch over it. Yeah. As she grows up with her... Really... I guess perfectionist is the term. Mother and... Father who just kind of lets the mother be a perfectionist and harp on May. May grows up to be kind of lonely. And by kind of, I do mean extremely. She grows to be more, more of an observer than someone who actually goes out and does things. And she works for a veterinarian, sometimes helping with sutures and the like. She doesn't really have, you know, social skills. She hasn't had a lot of time around people, so she hasn't really gotten used to how you behave around people. She's very nervous mousy, you know, she doesn't particularly have friends, although Anna Ferris, the surprisingly hot lesbian co-worker of hers, does appear to have a crush on her. Things start going bad when May kind of falls for a guy, specifically because of his hands. And I don't think I should really give any anything else away about the plot. This is a very different, very unique movie. I hadn't even heard about it before watching it, and I had no idea what to make of it. You know, Anna Ferris is essentially the only name attached to it. The characters are quite well written and you know they, they stand out and there really aren't any obnoxious ones among them. There are some really weird ones. The creepy factor is through the roof with this movie. I mean other than May herself. There are several characters who just do these little weird creepy things or say or you know look creepy or and some of them are just for just a fraction of a second just very briefly there's something creepy about them and it's just you know I in some ways this is a horror film and I suppose you know if you watch it as a psychological horror movie and you kinda know more or less what to expect, then that's about, you know, I, I would say go in without any expectations, just, except for maybe just expect a movie about someone who's, excuse me, socially awkward. The acting is really good. Angela Bettis, I believe is her, is her name, who plays May, does a fantastic job. You really feel, you know, her her emotion and you really sympathize with her. And that's something that's incredibly important with a movie like this. It's, you know, like with another movie I reviewed, Spiral. When you have a lead who is very socially inept, you have to work to earn your audience's sympathy because especially when it's a fictional character you really have to make sure that the audience will like them and sympathize with them it's so easy for audiences especially audiences to just you know 
fiction is kind of we want stories that we can kind of escape into. We don't necessarily want harsh reality in them. And when your lead is a walking, talking harsh reality, that can be really... It, it is a very, very difficult movie to watch. It's... It, it is one of the most difficult movies I've ever watched. It's, in the good way, hard to watch. It's, it's very, it has a lot of things where you just almost can't take it. You know, it's almost too much. The, May has this doll that's her best friend called Susie, and it's, it's a really creepy doll, and they do this great metaphor thing with the doll as kind of, yeah, I'm, I'm not really gonna go into detail about it, because it, that would include spoilers, but it's just, it's really great what they do with that. And the camera work is also very nice. May has this thing of noticing specific things about people. Like she will zero in on something that she thinks is perfect about that other person. And, you know, maybe part of it is that she herself doesn't feel perfect, you know, because of her eye and because, you know, the perfectionist mother. Yeah, so she looks for perfection and when she finds it, she's deeply attracted to it. And, you know, she hasn't had to deal with a lot of, you know, she, she wasn't accepted for most of her life. We see a little bit of her childhood and just, you know, no one around, no one when we see her looking at these people who she is attracted to some part of them the camera sort of focuses on that thing so like not quite a pov shot but just like we almost become the voyeur along with me we you know and we feel her attraction to that you know specific body characteristic and it's, it's just really effective. I'm not sure I can describe it any more than I already have. The movie is slightly less than 90 minutes, and it's never boring, but it... I suppose you could say that not that much necessarily happens. It is very much about the character of May and, you know, how she you know, the situations she's in, and the, you know, her falling for Adam, and, you know, the way she interacts with her surroundings. Near the end, the movie changes somewhat, becomes a bit of a different movie, almost, I suppose you could say that it is a natural climax to the build-up that has preceded it. I'm not sure I would say that the two completely fit. It almost feels like, you know, they are two different movies that just intersected there, but I do love both. You know, both the first two-thirds and the last third of the movie, regardless of whether they necessarily completely fit. And the the eventual ending, the very ending, is pitch perfect. I suppose that's about what there is to say about the movie. If it at all sounds appealing, please at least give it a chance. 
please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.